So here we are with the CD4020 chip lined up on a breadboard. Uh, we've got a 555 chip at uh, 9 volts providing a 1 hertz signal and there were a few problems along the way like for instance I was expecting it to be a straight binary counter but it wasn't counting correctly and in fact uh, despite a few well, it's a few sites on the internet that were incorrect finally I found uh, by some careful reading that in fact Q2 and Q3 are internal outputs entirely missing so when you feed in a 1 hertz signal uh, to the chip to the clock then you weren't getting the counting that you're expecting you were getting a relationship between all of those outputs but Q1 uh, on the left hand side there was not in sync with Q4 which is the next one so there's something happening internally in the chip and then there's Q4 kicking in there uh, at the eight second mark so if you understand the timing you can use this as a timer but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do, which was a binary counter. So um, what I did was I took out the clock and I used the button on the right hand side, not as a reset button, but actually just as a clock uh, signal so that I could put the clock on and off and I tracked it through to the 32 seconds with Q1, Q4, Q5 and Q6 uh, to see what was on and what was off at specific times. The result was a spreadsheet so you can see the different steps, the clock signal coming in, what was happening at Q1, what was happening, I think, at Q2 and Q3, the purple columns there, uh, which I was filling in the blanks, and then Q4, Q5, Q6, and the time on the right-hand side. So it's pretty obvious that you can see the patterns when it's all laid out like that, and it does enable you to anticipate um, using the clock signal from the 555, what timing is going to occur for various lights to come on so that was good it was nice to see that uh, I wasn't going crazy uh, and that the chip was actually working fine the next step or the next problem was the fact and you probably picked up in the first video that those those LEDs were incredibly bright and it took me a little while to figure this one out but if you have a look at the row of 470 ohm resistors at the back they're all connected together which at the time I thought was a good idea I was anticipating that um, you would get a signal from the 4020 chip that it would go to a particular LED and it would go out to ground as indicated but what I had forgotten was that given that they're all in a row there was another pathway so there's another pathway to ground through three um, of the resistors and another pathway to the ground through seven resistors and another pathway through 11 resistors so effectively four parallel resistors so I got onto a parallel uh, resistance calculator site, popped in the 470, 3 times 470, 7 times 470, and 11 times 470, and then the calculated overall resistance of that was just 300 ohms. So that explains the brightness. So out comes those uh, resistors, and in goes just two resistors. They're 1K resistors only. I still found that a bit bright, actually. So I ended up replacing those wires to ground with 3.3K um, resistors. I also switched around the lights. So Q1, Q2 and Q3 are missing, but Q4 actually goes to the right hand side like what I imagine a properly, properly uh, binary counter does. Um, and then uh, the Q5 goes to the to the next LED on the on the uh, to the left of that and so on. So if we start the um, counter you can now see that it's actually properly doing binary counting from the right hand side through to the left hand side q1 q2 and q3 are out and then all of those um, the rest of the leds which are speeding up now as i uh, increase the clock uh, are counting properly uh, as a as a proper binary counter so yes and there's a reset button there on the um, right hand side and uh, that just resets the count so that's the circuit working a lot of problems along the way but actually a pretty handy chip in the end as long as you understand um, how it works and uh, what its limitations are